Hello. Another week has passed, and we're here together again, gathering for worship while we are still apart. On behalf of Salt Springs, Scottsburn, Lionsbrook Pastoral Charge of the United Church of Canada, I want to welcome you to this time of worship and spiritual reflection. I am the Reverend Jim Weber Cook, and I am here at Scottsburn United Church Sanctuary. And joining me today, offering their gifts in our service, are our organist, Stuart Monroe, um, Fiddler, uh, Greg Chisholm, and behind the camera is Christine McKenzie, and I'm grateful to them for their gifts and sharing in this worship. We're glad that we can extend this ministry to you at a time when we can't physically come together because of the pandemic. And we hope that this virtual service will be a positive piece in your week. At the beginning of our services of worship, we light a candle in our tradition. The light of Christ is in us when we are together and when we are apart. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. This is the good news of the Christian gospel and it is a source of hope for us. I want to acknowledge today that our lives have been radically changed by this pandemic. Our patterns of living have been rearranged by COVID-19. Our interactions have been reconfigured by social distancing. And we're realizing that this is no short-term situation. Things will not get back to normal very soon, it seems. Some are saying that things will never be normal again, and our lives will forever be changed. This reality has challenged us, certainly, and for some more than others, disoriented us. For all who live alone, the days may not feel all that different. But for others, the change has been profound. For all of us, it is not business as usual. Acknowledging this new reality, and all else that weighs on us, frustrates us, mystifies us, frightens us, or unnerves us. We settle ourselves now for this time of worship. Let us be open to sacred presence. Let the Spirit speak to us through music and scripture. And let us affirm that God is with us in and through all that our days hold. We are not alone. Let us pray together. God of the wilderness, God of the journey, God of our lives, unite us now by your spirit of encouragement. Renew in us a deep trust in your promise to remain with us no matter what. Encourage us by the sacred words spoken in scripture and in each other and restore in us a sense of hope and resiliency which may serve us well for these days. Be our guide and our companion as we walk with Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. In the Bible, the story of the Hebrew people is told. The story of how they were, at one point in their history, taken into slavery in Egypt. How Moses provided leadership to help them escape. How God's guidance helped them to cross the sea when the wind blew back the waves and they were able to walk on dry ground and get away to safety. They were so grateful at that point and so excited that, well, like any of us, they would dance and sing and were joyous. But that was just the beginning of a long, long journey of many years wandering in the wilderness. And of course, they didn't have any food. And in what was mostly desert, they didn't have any water. And it didn't take long before they became very bothered, very upset. They complained. They blamed Moses. They were starving. They were dehydrated. They were afraid. They were frustrated. They didn't think they were going to survive. And they didn't think that God cared about them, that God had deserted them. In the book of Exodus, chapters 16 and 17, the story is told concerning what happened next. 
One evening, feeling hungry and thirsty and worn out, they stopped for the night and made camp. And where they were, a whole flock of birds flew in and landed. They caught them and they cooked them for food. They were so relieved that they had something to eat. Their stomachs stopped growling and they were happy, at least for the moment. The next morning when they woke up, they found this white sticky stuff all over the ground and they tasted it and they discovered that it tasted sweet. It tasted pretty good. And Moses told the people that these were gifts that God had given them to help them. Moses told them that God cared about them, that God would give them what they needed. And that was just great. And they were happy, at least for the moment. In a couple of days, though, they started complaining again because they didn't have water. They were thirsty. They were parched. They got so upset that Moses was scared that they were going to turn on him and take it out on him. Moses went to a little quiet spot and he prayed to God and God guided him to a rock and he was guided to take his staff and to strike that rock with it and the rock split open and behold, water poured from it. Hallelujah! And the people had water to drink and they were happy again because they had what they needed to live. And Moses told the people, God is with us. Remember this. God will help us. God will give us what we need. They wandered in the wilderness for a long, long time. And they didn't always remember that. You know, it's hard to remember that God cares about you when you're hungry and thirsty, when you're tired and hot and homesick. And they would still have Lots of hard days, but God continued to help them. God was with them all the time. I welcome Greg now to offer the gift of music in our worship. Turned against by people whom he had encouraged. 
He experienced deprivation and illness. And listen to what he writes in his letter to the Philippians, reading from the fourth chapter. I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were always concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through God who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. And my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. I hope that the words of scripture that are shared today will be a meaningful part of this time for you. Recently I was speaking to one of my aunts in Moncton, my dad's sister, and she told me a story relating to her little grandson who's just about to turn six years old. And she gave me permission to share that story with you today. Now this happened just after New Brunswick took a step forward in relaxing the rules around social isolation by allowing two family households to come together to form a bubble. My aunt and my uncle had only seen their grandson from a distance for weeks. So finally the day came when everyone was so excited they could come for dinner at Grammy and Grandpa's house to have a visit. After the meal, my aunt's grandson came to her and said, Granny, I want you to come upstairs. I have a secret to tell you. Well, my aunt was uh, a little concerned about what might be coming, and her curiosity was piqued, so up the stairs they went. And when they got there, this little tyke asked his grandmother, Can I have a sleepover here tonight? Well, of course, the answer to that was that Grandma was fine with it, but that would depend on what his mom and dad said. They did agree, and so the plan was made that he would have a sleepover that very night. Later on, when Grammy and her grandson were putting together a puzzle, this little man, as she described it, brought his elbows up onto the table, placed his chin in his hands, and said, Grammy, I just don't think I'm going to survive. Well, you can imagine how this stopped my aunt in her tracks. She was so concerned to hear this dismal, grown-up pronouncement coming out of her not-quite-six-year-old grandson's mouth. Fretting that perhaps he hadn't had enough to eat and was feeling faint from hunger, or maybe worse, that he was really struggling with coping with this pandemic and this social distancing and not having school, she asked him what he meant. He said, I'm not going to survive this. I just need some Lego. Something to make me concentrate. Well, as it turned out, Grammy wasn't following for that. So he goes over to the armchair where his grandpa is sleeping, and he wakes his grandfather up, and he repeats the same concern about not being able to survive and needing some Lego. Well, his grandpa couldn't bear the thought of him not surviving. And so he got up and out he went to buy himself, his grandson a Lego kit. And I understand it did help him concentrate because that kit that said it was for a nine to 10 year old was put together that very night by this little guy. And he was able to survive in the end, thankfully. Kids do say the darndest things, don't they? Just as our Blink Letter used to say in his radio program. This story got me to thinking about surviving in this time as we chart this new course in our lives called COVID-19. And I got to wondering, what is it that we need to survive? And when is it that we get to feeling that we don't think we're going to survive? Speaking of surviving, did you hear about the boy who had a disease that required him to eat dirt 
three times a day. It was a good thing that his older brother had told him all about it. That joke is uh, credited to comedian Milton Jones. So how do we survive this? Why do you need to survive these days? My first degree in university was in psychology and sociology, and I remember learning in a first year psychology course about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and this psychologist who had this theory that envisioned that our needs are grouped in different categories, and that we have to meet our bottom needs, the basic needs, before we can move up that pyramid. He described the needs as being basic, psychological, and self-fulfillment. And of course, our most basic needs are for water and food, just like the Hebrew people so long ago, and for warmth, for shelter, and for rest. Once those are met, met Maslow, Maslow said that we can then meet our needs for safety and security. And with that achieved, we can address our needs for love and belonging through intimate relationships and friendships. And next, we would meet our esteem needs by working toward feelings of accomplishment. And if we could meet those, we would finally be able to address our self-actualization, he called it, which meant achieving one's full potential, including creative activities. So yes, we know that we have needs that need to be met in order to live, and they begin with the most basic needs for food and water and shelter and rest. I like what the singer and children's entertainer Rafi said in his song, All I Really Need. He sang, all I really need is a song in my heart, food in my belly, and love in my family. But I'm thinking specifically, what do we need to survive this particular time, this pandemic? What is helping you through? What are you discovering that you need in order to cope with these new realities of our lives? And in order to be okay? And not just to survive, but even to thrive. I made a list. I was thinking, what do I need to survive? So my list is perhaps not complete, but this is what came to mind. I need nature. As I wrote in my midweek message to our pastoral charge this week. I need to get outside for a walk as often as possible into the natural surroundings, being mindful of the trees and the spring flowers, the brook, or the waves lapping the shore. I need to immerse myself in creation's beauty and wonder and make that connection which is good medicine and helps me maintain a measure of mental health. I need some exercise. Well, actually, I probably need a lot of exercise. But that's not only healthy for my body, I know. It's good for my emotional well-being and for my brain, for my spirit. I feel so much better when I've gone for a long walk or a bike ride or worked in the yard. I need space, because I'm not used to having my whole family at home 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I also need solitude. But I need companionship and social connection and the means to continue in relationship with others. I've said to quite a few people I have a new appreciation for Alexander Graham Bell and his invention of the telephone, which has come leaps and bounds since 1876. It's allowed me to keep in touch regularly with family in New Brunswick, with friends in many places across the country. I'm thankful for email and for other communication technologies which have allowed me to keep in touch with the people of the congregations I serve. I'm thankful for Zoom, I didn't even know what Zoom was seven weeks ago. This platform which allows me to connect with United Church colleagues here in Nova Scotia every week. And I'm thankful too for Canada Post, the so-called snail mail by which I have sent and received cards and letters. Not being able to be together physically, it's so important to be in touch, to be in touch with loved ones and with my community. I also figure I need books. I need to take my mind off work and the news and the uncertainties about the future by diving into a good story, a mystery, or a drama by which I can connect with fictional characters and share their world for a time. I need spiritual practices to nurture my faith so that I can be reminded that God's presence is with me and the promises of God's Spirit to sustain me will keep me going, renewing me, encouraging me. And so I take time 
each week to watch some colleagues offering worship moments, either formal or informal, on the internet. And I take time to pray. I take time to read our United Church of Canada's Broadview magazine or other spiritual writings. And last but not least, I need music. I need to listen to music which can soothe the soul. I remember driving my father's car as a teenager in the 1970s to a song with those lyrics blaring through the open windows. I need music to settle me sometimes. I need music to energize me sometimes. I need music to move me to various emotional spaces that open up my spirit. I hope that you might consider what you need to survive and even to thrive in this time. Make your own list and follow it. Who knows? Maybe it is Lego that will help you survive. What I do know is that things do change in our lives, as the Apostle Paul noted. He had lived through times of want and times of abundance. He had lived through times of joy and times of sorrow. He had lived through trauma and uncertain realities. But he had learned that through all the changes and all the circumstances that he faced, God's love sustained him, and God's presence encouraged him. And that faith gave him strength and taught him that he could face all that life held, because he was not alone. God was with him. May you have faith to trust that you too are not alone right now. God is with you, now, always. Forever. Amen. our hearts to stir us. Thank you, Stuart. I invite us now to take some moments in prayer. Let us pray. God of all goodness surrounding us in creation, with us in the Spirit, walking beside us in the risen Christ, we gather prayers from our hearts now in the midst of this time in which we live. We are grateful for sunshine, for the warmth of the sun on our skin this week, for leaves that are popping from buds on the trees, for bright splashes of color from flowering plants, for opportunities to be out walking in the yard, or working in the garden, or sitting on the veranda feeling the spring breeze. We are grateful too for lessening numbers of people being diagnosed with COVID-19 here in our province of Nova Scotia and other places across the country. We're grateful for decisions being made to open up some businesses that, that have been closed and some locations such as beaches and parks that have been off limits. We're grateful for reconnecting with family members in our bubbles 
and for continued contact in the other ways we can with those with whom we cannot yet spend time in person. We continue to be thankful for health care workers and for other frontline laborers who continue to provide services under these new conditions and new risks. For the faith that sustains and strengthens us and the assurance that you are always with us through the experience of our lives, we give thanks. Our hearts hold special prayers for those who are living with illness and whose days are uncertain. For those who are worried about family members and have sleepless nights. For those whose lives have been changed by the death of family members or friends and for whom grief fills them with sadness and loneliness. And in particular, we remember the family of Captain Jen Casey and the other members of the Snowbirds Flight Team family. We pray for those whose jobs have been affected and who are without work and who live with anxiety about what the days ahead will hold. We pray for those who have heavy responsibilities to bear in this time, our government and public health officials and leaders of business. And we pray for those who are overwhelmed and feeling as if they don't know how they're going to survive. Most gracious God, where hearts are fearful and confined, we pray for freedom and courage. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, we pray for peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, we pray for resourcefulness, and for hope. Where distrust reshapes every understanding, we pray for healing and transformation. And where spirits are daunted and dimmed, we pray for a deepening trust in your abiding presence and your provision for our needs by the grace revealed in Christ Jesus, in whose love we pray. I hope that you'll join us again next week for a time of worship together. 
As we close today, I want to acknowledge the parting words of Moses to his people. He said, Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. God will not fail you or forsake you. May the grace of God, deeper than our imagination, the love of Christ, stronger than our need, and the companionship of the Spirit, greater than we even had hoped for, guide and sustain you today and all your tomorrow.